So it's on SD, Christ is Risen. Uh, this is a continuation of our Sunday School Sermonettes. And today we're going to concentrate on the beautiful icons behind the altar. When one first comes into the church, so let's go in. The most prominent icon that one sees is the Platitera Pelura Noi the icon of the Virgin Mary known as she uh, who more spacious than the heavens. And as you notice, um, if you look at the icon of the Virgin Mary and compare it with the icon of Christ, usually Mary is depicted wearing a blue um, undergarment and a red mantle, where Christ is wearing a red undergarment and a blue mantle. There's different reasons for um, explanations for this. Some, some of them are contradictory, but it's uh, uh, the concept is that the red represents the humanity of Christ that is enveloped in the blue, his divinity. There's others that say the exact opposite of that. And then likewise, the, the Virgin Mother is um, the the. The color of blue is a color of contemplation in the, in the heavenly, and that she, in giving birth to Christ, um, his, she takes, Christ takes on flesh. And so this is the reason for the colors. Uh, if you notice, if we move closer to the icon of the Platicera, you'll notice that there's three icons, there's three stars, um, one on each shoulder of the Virgin Mother, and one on her forehead. And these stars are to accent the virginity of the Virgin Mother, that she was a virgin, she is a virgin, and she always will be um, a virgin. Uh, and so th th this, uh, this is to also um, to fight theological um, heresies that have taken place throughout the history of Christianity. Um, as we go, let's, we're gonna go inside the altar and look at the further detail, the icons of uh, So why is the icon called Platitera more uh, spacious than the heavens? Because Mary, um, carries within her Jesus, who is the creator of the heavens. So he who created the heavens is greater than the heavens. So this is why this icon is called the uh, Platitera, Dun Uranon. Uh, you notice also with the icons of the Virgin Mother, you always see her initials, Mite, uh, the Mi and the Ro, um, the Greek letters for Mother, and uh, the Theta and the Ypsilon, uh, Theo, me, the Mother of God. Um, and so this is the icon of Platitera. We also always know that the Virgin Mother is normally never depicted without her son, without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the initials, you always know it's an icon of Jesus because some of the icons, as Father Michael was saying last week, look similar. The icon of Jesus always has the initials o on, the Omicron Omega Ni, which means he who is. When Moses met uh, God at the burning bush and Moses said God who are you he said I am who I am that's the first person response here we use the third person response of Christ he who is um, along with the uh, icon of the Platitera normally in, in most Orthodox churches you have the icon of the mystic of the divine liturgy and you see Jesus giving out uh, his, his body to the disciples and then you see Jesus giving out his blood to the disciples and so this is known as the icon of the Ithia Metalipsis, Thea Metalipsis the receiving of the holy body and the drinking of the precious blood um, along with uh, often in this asp of the altar is often depicted the, the, high, the great hierarchs of the church why the hierarchs? Because they are, are the, the great bishops of the church who are obviously all the sacraments are due to the, are through the bishop. 
um, the hierarchs were responsible, especially the great hierarchs, for the, the actual writing of the divine liturgies. For instance, we have over here, St. Gregory the Theologian, St. Basil the Great, and St. John Chrysostom. The liturgy we celebrate on almost every Sunday is the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. Um, ten times throughout the year, we also celebrate the liturgy of St. Basil. Uh, these uh, fathers and great hierarchs are known as uh, the, the great hierarchs of the golden age of uh, theology in the third, fourth century. Um, St. Gregory is celebrated January 25th. St. Uh, Basil the Great is celebrated January 1st. And St. John Chrysostom is celebrated September, uh, November 13th. Um, they are also celebrated all together on, March, on January 30th. 30th called the, the Feast of the Great Hierarchs. And um, so along with St. John Chrysostom and the Divine Liturgy, St. John Chrysostom also uh, commented and gave homilies on every verse of the scriptures from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Uh, St. Basil the Great is called Great because he did tremendous things. The modern day hospital is based on what St. Basil did in the third, fourth century. He was also responsible for opening up orphanages and starting hostels and setting the rules for monasticism, the long rules and the short rules. Um, St. Basil was a, a great writer, a great theologian, and he wrote also on a beautiful work on the Holy Spirit, thus showing us that the Holy Spirit is of God and is God. Um, St. Gregory was a classmate of St. Basil the Great, and he's known as the theologian. There's only, the title theologian has only been given to three saints in the whole history of the Orthodox Church. St. John the theologian, the evangelist and, and apostle and a disciple. St. Gregory the theologian of the fourth century and St. Simeon the theologian, I believe of the 12th or 13th century. Uh, St. Gregory wrote on the resurrection. He wrote on baptism. He wrote on tremendous treaties, many of his uh, sermons actually became hymns in the in the life of the church. One of the great hymns that we sing during uh, Christmas is the Gata Vasias of Christmas, uh, Christ is born, glorify him. This comes from uh, uh, specifically from an exact sermon that St. Gregory the theologian wrote. Uh, St. Gregory and St. Basil were classmates at in Athens. Uh, they went to a pagan uh, university uh, to learn the best that they could and then they used their learning to uh, glorify the theology and glorify God. It says that they only knew two roads from their apartments, the road to the church and the road to school. And they tried to outdo each other to the glory of God, never to hurt each other, but to be, um, by, by good competition, to be able to push each other to glorify God in a greater state. Over on the right side, we have the uh, other three hierarchs, uh, St. Nicholas, uh, St. Spiridon, and St. Nectarios. St. Nicholas is celebrated December 6th, St. Spiridon is celebrated December 12th, and St. Nectarios is celebrated uh, November 9th. St. Nicholas, uh, again, was present at the first ecumenical council. Um, he, uh, he is the origins of uh, what today people who call Santa Claus. His, the story of Santa Claus really stems from uh, St. Nicholas. Uh, he was, uh, he's known as be, to be the protector of sailors. People also pray to him uh, who might be in some type of legal um, problems because St. Nicholas helped uh, three youths who were gonna be executed unjustly um, by interceding for them and showing who actually was the person at fault for the um, uh, the crime that had been committed. Uh, St. Spiridon was actually a married uh, bishop. He was from Cyprus, and he was uh, a very uh, uh, pious, uh, simple uh, uh, bishop. Um, he attended the first ecumenical council, and he was, his clothes were so ragged that they didn't, they thought he was a beggar, and they wouldn't let him into the uh, council until it was revealed who he was. He miraculously taught about the Holy Trinity by taking a brick and squeezing it three times and saying, in the name of the Father, and out came fire, in the name of the Son, and out came water, 
and again in the name of the Holy Spirit and there was left the, uh, the, the dust from the brick. Um, this was during a time when people were trying to say that Jesus was not of, of God but was a creation of God the Father, thus denying the divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Saint Nectarius um, is a fairly recent saint. He died in 1920 and he was made a saint in 1960. Uh, his life is a life of suffering, a life of uh, humility, a life of always looking um, for the good in some of the sometimes the hardest uh, times of his life. Um, he's also um, a patron saint for those who are living with cancer and oftentimes people um, will ask for his prayers and he has uh, been known to heal people um, himself who have been diagnosed with uh, cancer. Um, so these are all, uh, so the reason the, the hierarchs are often depicted in the asps of the uh, altar is because this is where they belong because they are the celebrant of the uh, mystical uh, supper, they are the celebrant of the divine liturgy and so this is truly where their uh, appropriate position is in the iconography and in, in the placing of the church. So in, so usually in the asps of the church, again, we see the platitera, the nuranon, of the Virgin Mother in Christ, the uh, icon of the mystical supper, and the, the three hierarchs. How beautiful it is when we enter the church, the first icon that really um, catches our attention is the Mother of God. And, of, and we call her the Panagia, uh, because of all the saints, she's the most holy. Of all the saints, it's through this woman that um, salvation came in, into the world. And um, she is truly our ladder from uh, of God in heaven to us here on earth. Um, may we have a beautiful uh, fifth Sunday of Pascha as we celebrate uh, Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well. Um, who will later be known as Saint Fortini. Christos Anesti, and have a beautiful, beautiful uh, weekend. God bless.